The observed simulation was set up for students who are currently enrolled in a family nurse practitioner program. The purpose of this simulation was for students to come up with potential diagnoses for a patient based on their symptoms. The scenario given to the student was a 75-year-old female patient who was brought to the hospital by her daughter because she was intermittently confused. The student was provided with the patient's laboratory values prior to the simulation. Upon entering the room, the student found the elderly patient laying in her bed. After the student introduced herself, she asked the patient why she was at the hospital. The patient responded that she didn't know why she was here. The student then proceeded to assess the patient. She performed a head-to-toe assessment and asked the patient questions while performing her assessment. The only significant finding from the head-to-toe assessment was the patient had a heart murmur. After in interviewing the patient and completing the head-to-toe assessment, the student ordered an echo for the patient to check her valves for function. She also ordered labs to check for vitamin deficiencies and a urinalysis to check for a urinary tract infection. She also stated she wanted to check with the family to see what medications the patient takes because the patient was not a good historian. After the student ordered tests for the patient, the instructor ended the simulation. The instructor then came into the simulation room and debriefed the patient. The student told the instructor that she thought the patient's confusion could be due to three different things. Vitamin deficiencies, a urinary tract infection, or poor perfusion from a failing heart valve. The instructor complimented this on detecting the heart murmur and said most students miss that. She agreed with the student that getting an echo on this patient was a good idea. The instructor also agreed with the student that the patient's confusion could be due to vitamin deficiencies. She did point out to the student that a urinary tract infection was not the cause of her confusion because the lab values given to the student at the beginning of the simulation included a urinalysis and it did not show an infection. The instructor told us she did a great job and besides missing the results of the urinalysis, she did everything right for this patient. I feel this simulation experience was very effective for the student. She was able to take the knowledge that she learned in the classroom about causes for confusion in elderly patients and apply it when diagnosing the human simulator patient. She was also able to practice her physical assessment skills on this patient. She did this effectively because she was able to detect that the patient had a heart murmur. Although the simulation did not include the use of any other equipment besides the human simulator, it was a great way for this to practice her skills as a family nurse practitioner student. I think she also took away from this experience that it is important to pay attention to details. Simulation offers many benefits to both students and educators. I have chosen three benefits that I feel are most important when using simulation with students. First, simulation offers a safe and non-threatening environment for students to practice their clinical skills. Second, simulation actively engages the student in the learning process. Third, simulation allows for immediate debriefing, allows for a discussion about what was done right and what should have been done differently. Once I become an educator, I would like to teach clinical to undergraduate students, so simulation will be a great tool for me to utilize when teaching clinical skills to students.